Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator and sunscreen fanatic. And as you can see, today I have a super special guest, arguably like the OG skinfluencer, James <laughs> Wells. How are you, James? Hello, everybody. Hi. Super, super thankful to have James on the channel. We actually just filmed the collab for his channel. So make sure you go check that out. Make sure you go follow, subscribe. All of his things are going to be down in the description box. Is it at James underscore S underscore Welsh, right? That's right, yes. Yeah, yes. <laughs> so make sure you go follow and watch that video. But today we're gonna to be talking about something that I get a lot of questions about and something I think James can relate to very, very well. Ask influencers, we get a lot of PR. A lot of PR. Um, you've seen my three shelves. I'm about to go order two more shelves just because I, so many sunscreens, so much skincare. And people always ask, how do you get through it? How do you manage to use it all before it expires? And basically what it comes down to is you get really creative with how you use your skincare so that you end up using it all. Yeah, very creative. <laughs> mm -hmm. So today, James and I are gonna be sharing some of the ways we tend to use specific types of skincare products so that it's still getting used, but just in some really fun, inventive ways. So first one we have is actually one we both have in common, and that is we all have exfoliating toners of some sort, whether it's an AHA, BHA, PHA, or a mix of all three of them. But basically using these not on your face, but as deodorant under your arms. Yes, I always get, I mention this on and off and people are always like, wait, what, what are you talking about? But I found that for me personally, PHAs work best on my armpits. And then like BHAs and AHAs work great for like elbows, knees, um, the back of the feet, like the, what's the back of the feet called? The heel? The heel? <laughs> <laughs> come come see my videos um where they does where there's like a lot thicker skin mm -hmm. but yeah for some reason the pha works great as a deodorant for me hmm. i'm still playing yeah. around for me i haven't found it to be like a heavy duty solution so if i'm leaving the house mm. for the day and being around people i will use like real deodorant oh yeah but yeah. <laughs> it's been interesting playing around with it there are some antibacterial properties to a few of these exfoliators but also like as james is noting exfoliation that we use for the face can also be used on the body to target things like texture hyperpigmentation and anything else we use ahas for also like they're great humectants so that's one of the ways i repurpose these on my body mostly under my arms but also like james mentioned shoulders neck chests yeah legs. back of the arms mm -hmm. that chickadee skin yeah works really well on those so one thing i tend to not have a lot of time for nowadays unfortunately is like leave on masks so like clay masks sheet masks as well i kind of find that my skincare routines tend to be next product next product next product and as much as i like to long it out i just don't have the patience to be waiting around for a clay mask however i have a lot of them i have a lot of them and i find them very drying so one thing i've discovered is taking a clay mask that i didn't really enjoy but i kind of have to use up and a toner this is actually one of my favorite toners but also a toner that you didn't necessarily like and merging the two together so you end up with a really nice kind of like somewhere in between a nice hydrating mask that can wash off easily without it cracking and drying down, but also getting rid of that excess sebum, giving you that temporary appearance of smaller pores, and just basically, you know, giving your skin that kind of like, um, what's the word? Kind of like poreless, fl poreless, flawless look that a lot of people kind of expect from a clay mask. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's like my go-to at the moment. I must admit, I am kind of racing through the clay mask just so I can get rid of them, giving a lot away, but also trying to, trying to use them up. And is this like the pre-made, like in the dry clay mask or like actual powder clay that you mix in? Literally any of them, yeah. So I, like the Aztec heating clay, I've just finished by adding a load of um, toner to it because that stuff lasts forever, the Aztec heating clay. Because it's just bentonite, right? And kaolin in like a tub. Yeah. Yeah, so it lasts forever. Um, but you know, like the tubey ones, um, the ready-made clay mask, I just find it, even for my oily skin, too drying unless I add in that toner, that extra hydration. Mm-hmm. So one I'm going to talk about, and I know James, back in the day, your intro used to be in sometimes hair. Um, sometimes. <laughs> well, late, like, if you guys have noticed, I cut my hair, and so I've been really playing around with what products I use in it, how I'm trying to style it, and honestly, sometimes I feel like based off, like, the pomade or the clay I use in it, it's really hard to just wash it off with shampoo, unless I, like, go in a few mm -hmm. rounds. And I don't want to do it necessarily because like a lot of shampooing can be really, really drying. So something I've been doing is actually using an oil cleanser to start to break down the basically polymer blends that are in all these like pomades and these like working sprays and all these like hairspray products, just because honestly, most times this hair is like shellacked down. And it's been yeah. really, really helpful. <laughs> um, I have like four different bottles of oil cleanser and it takes me a long time to get through these. 
So it's really helping me to like work through the product a lot quicker and also helping me to be a lot more gentle with my hair. Mm. So I actually used to work in a salon like between jobs um, when I wanted to concentrate on YouTube. So I was reception in a salon. And one thing we used to get a lot, especially from the gents, because of the type of products that they used to use was a lot of product buildup. They'd often think it was like dandruff or like you'd graze in their hair. And it's like, no, actually this is just where the shampoo isn't cutting it. Like it's not getting through those oils and waxes. So that's such a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do like a double wash, but I've never used an oil like that before. That's so clever. And honestly, it's just like, I feel like mm. it's actually that's a cultural thing. Some cultures do like mm. scalp oiling before they do wash days. But like, honestly, yeah. it's just, I feel like hair product now is a lot more heavy duty than it used to be. And oh, yeah. I also, yeah. I want waterproof. Cause especially right now in London, it's like, you don't know what the weather's going to be like. It'll be like <laughs> yeah. super, super hot and sunny. And then like pouring the next day. So in order to get that product out, like you need to be heavy duty. And so... We use uh, oil cleansers to like break down water resistant sunscreens and foundation and stuff. It can do the same for hair. It makes so much sense. I don't know why I've not done that before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, what do you have next? Cool, so I get a lot of moisturizers in PR, like a lot, a lot, a lot. And my skin is very temperamental. I have an oily T-zone, very much dryness and kind of like very reactive cheeks. Like they're red now just because I touch them and have a bit of my old rosacea. Depending on what the weather's doing, they go crazy. So I have a lot of moisturizers that could potentially go to waste. So other than using them just on my body to kind of like moisturize the drier areas, what I do like to do, so here's one that I don't really like too much, is the Laneige Water Sleeping Mask. I thought it's something that I would like as someone with oily skin, mm -hmm. but what I do is I kind of use this as a mask. Like, because, you know, like night creams are often called masks, and they're not really a mask, they're just kind of a bit more intense. I just use it as an actual mask, so I'll be a bit more generous with it. Pile it on, kind of like, you know, especially concentrating on those drier areas. Give it about 10, 15 minutes, and then just wipe away with a bit of tissue or a cotton pad. Just for that extra kind of like bonus kind of surface level hydration so if you are very dry you're popping out you don't want to look so dry use one of your moisturizers overly be very 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 generous <laughs> yeah and i mean like we see sleeping masks all the time sleeping masks are nothing more than just like a marketing gimmick to call like a more rich occlusive night cream and right. honestly sometimes i do the opposite there are some really really great sleeping masks and i'm like oh this is a great moisturizer and i tend to use it for the daytime mm. like uh Isentry has like their hyaluronic acid uh sleeping mask Yes. Love that product for like just daytime wear because it's super, super hydrating. It's honestly not that rich. Mm, yeah. No, there's a lot of sleeping masks that just don't need to be that. And they often put the price up on like night masks and like sleeping masks because they're pretending it's something special. When well, like you said, it's just like probably just a little bit more inclusive, right? Yeah. Sleeping masks, <laughs> gimmick. My next one is one I talk about incessantly on my channel and it's from my favorite brand, arguably, and that is Fenty Skin. <gasps> Yay! I know you like most of their products, right? I do. I had a bit of reaction to the moisturizer, but other than that. Well, really um, like the products. I know they are <laughs> fragranced. I know that people are like, oh, it didn't work for my face, which first of all, I love the smell. I love the sensory of a really nicely fragranced product. And the thing about these is that these are very straight to the point skincare products. There's not a lot of bells and whistles. They're not gonna like exfoliate and peel your face off and all that stuff. They have like a lot of really nice skin benefits to them. And what I do is I basically just take the product from basically hairline all the way down. I love the way that the Fenty Skin Fat Water feels. <sighs> on my body, it's I love the so smell. Nice. And you can really get a lot of benefits from the niacinamide in this and like helping with like if you have pigmentation issues like on your elbows, I have it like on my hips for some reason. So that's helping a lot with that. Ooh. But it's also just nicely hydrating. And then the night cream, love the texture of this, love the smell of this. And there's nothing that's more comforting to me than like going to bed smelling good. Yes, yeah. So I know they have the new body like butter. I haven't gotten that, I haven't bought it. This serves a purpose for me really well, especially because I have so many other moisturizers I can use for my face so i just love fenty skin products on my body because it takes the parts i love using it for on my face and just smothers it everywhere else mm -hmm. yeah you know what i actually used to keep like a toner next to the shower so when i get out i just apply it to wet skin and the, i'm gonna start doing the fat water that i've got there because that's gonna be so nice mm -hmm. so so nice good idea and i always say it's not just your face cheeks that can be supple and hydrated Yes. Speaking of body cheeks, <laughs> your bum cheeks, sheet masks. I have a ton of them with any kind of like 
K because I'm obsessed with K beauty. So any kind of like K beauty delivery that you get, usually they'll bung in like ten free sheet masks and like a load of samples. So I'm at a point where like I, if I give them away, I'm just gonna be loading them off onto everyone else because they have so many. They're a little bit wasteful, but rather than just chucking them in the bin, I like to use them on areas of my body where they are super super dehydrated or super dry and itchy. So in the winter, the like the front bit of my legs, what are they called? Shins. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wait, let, me, let me do that again so you can cut that out. <laughs> no, we're keeping that in. My front leg shins get so dry and itchy to the point where as much as I moisturize them, nothing seems to happen. But for some reason that added occlusive layer of the sheet mask, 15 minutes of putting a sheet mask on my legs, on my bum cheeks, on my hips, they tend to get really dry as well. After a shower, just laying there, like naked with sheet masks all over me. And that occlusive layer really gives the product time to kind of like settle into your skin and add that hydration. And then you can just moisturize over the top and it makes such a huge difference for me. And I know a lot of us out there have just a load of sheet masks that again, it's the masking that I just don't have time for, but I have time to lay there after a shower with them on my body. No, that's a really good point. I, I haven't done like the full body sheet mask situation, but Ooh. these masks, those sheet masks, they're juicy. They got a lot, so a lot, juicy. a lot of serum, essence, whatever that is. I will have it on my face, but afterwards I squeeze it out and that juice is going everywhere. Whatever is extra in the pouch, lather it on. But um, no, as you mentioned, I do have dozens upon dozens of sheet masks. I need to, I need to try this out. Lay them up. Lay them all over your legs. <laughs> My front leg shins, got it. Front legs only. <laughs> Next is one cool. I talk about a lot on my channel. And I mean, like the skin issues people have on their face, I think people neglect to realize that if you have those same issues on your body, you can use the same solutions. And so with that, I'm gonna be talking about using like a salicylic acid based cleanser to kind of like cleanse your body. I have the one from the Inky List. This is the jumbo you have size. the big one. Yes, Ugh. limited edition, bought it. Mm. This is one that like, if you have issues, like sometimes I get like, slight breakouts or like comedones on my back and my shoulders mm. or I know people do like have a little bit more of that issue and also if you just want to like lightly exfoliate your body having that benefit in a cleansing product it's going to be a lot more gentle and so just using like a salicylic acid based cleanser or a benzoyl peroxide based cleanser if you have a little bit more of a severe body acne issue that's a good one I was because you do get body washes within but I always feel like it's not quite the same thing I used one from um a Sun By Me. They do like an AHA, BHA, PHA. Mm -hmm. I didn't quite think it was, because I use a salicylic acid, especially on my shoulders, where I'm constantly spraying my hair and all the hairspray falls on my shoulders and often breaks me out. Mm -hmm. I find it much more effective. I don't know if there's a reason for that over a body wash. I don't know. It might just be a very good product. <laughs> oh, and also if you have like a really oily scalp or you tend to suffer, I found it really helped when I had like a little bit of dandruff situation. It also, you could use it as a bit of a clarifying shampoo as well. And for this, I mean, for the scalp especially, once a week, just because you don't want to overdo it, you don't want to overly strip your scalp, but applying it, let it sit for a minute to three minutes, I found was really, really helpful with um, especially oil production. You are full of good ideas today. I'm learning so much from you. <laughs> now the student becomes the teacher. Ah. <laughs> just kidding. Anyways, uh, what do you got next? So. Eye patches, again, it's along that same kind of uh, line as like sheet masking and all that kind of stuff. One thing I do find them really, really good for, and not, you know, I still use eye patches occasionally, but I do like putting them everywhere. Again, if I have particularly dry areas, I will use that eye mask. Again, purely for that occlusive layer. There's something about these occlusive layers that just makes such a huge difference rather than just the moisturizer, right? So really giving it like 10, 15 minutes to work on the skin. So I particularly get dry along the beard line. If you don't wash off your cleanser and you have a beard, if you don't wash it off thoroughly, you're kind of screwed as far as breakouts go for a long time. So I do like to put them along the beard line and kind of just let all the serum kind of drip into the beard. Why does that sound gross? I don't know. But it's very, very good at getting under the beard and treating those kind of areas that just need that little bit of extra attention when it comes to dryness and dehydration. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, like, first of all, just having a beard, it's always something that people neglect that like everything collects down here. Everything gets stuck yes. down here, especially like when I'm wearing a full beat and I oil cleanse. I always, if I forget to, I'll get breakouts here because the excess makeup tends to collect down here. But like, 
you're hydrating and moisturizing all that stuff, you can really do and make sure you get up into that beard area just to make sure that the skin underneath is well taken care of. Yeah, I mean, I get asked a lot of questions about it and I actually leave it out of my videos because it doesn't look great to do. <laughs> it's like the beard care, you're cleansing and you're pushing all your beard hair up and then you're moisturizing and seruming under there as well. But yeah, whilst it doesn't look good on camera, it's definitely something you should do. And then my next one, and James kind of touched on this, so basically using your exfoliating products on like your feet. I don't like feet. Feet no, make me uncomfortable. <laughs> so I am about to show feet on this channel. <laughs> But something worth noting is the skin on the soles of your feet and the palms of your hands are thicker. There's an extra, one little extra layer of skin um, in the epidermis that allows it to be a little bit more thick and a little bit more resilient. And as a result of that, if you have any exfoliating peels, any exfoliating solutions, i.e. the infamous one from The Ordinary, <laughs> that's too spicy for your face, use it on your feet. <laughs> I saw someone talk about using the strength of like acid exfoliation uh, products like this one or the Sukari Baby Facial from Junk Elephant. And they're like, oh, it works great on the feet because you're a lot less sensitive to that kind of like burning sensation in those areas, you can tolerate it a lot better. And obviously like exfoliating those areas, there's a lot of benefit to it. It makes your feet soft, helps prevent really, really dry scaly feet. A lot of us have these products like around because you might've bought it, it might not have worked for you. And you're like, well, I'm not gonna toss it. Another solution. Mm. Have you ever used one of those foot pill masks? You know, the one that like little socks? Horrific. Those scare me. They're horrific. Those scare me. Yeah. Because I've had people be like, like you put it on and like for the first day it's all good. And then from like day, day two to day seven, you are literally like molting. Like your yes. skin is just peeling off. Mm -hmm. And I had someone be like, be prepared to like vacuum your entire apartment for a few days just because all that dead skin just gets yeah, everywhere. Yeah, it's all true. Don't do them. They're horrific and you will regret it on day two. I promise you. <laughs> I need to look into like what causes that because I mean, yes. I've never had that experience using this mm. on like my feet or whatever, but for some reason it's like those like cause your feet to like peel, peel. Yeah, it's like super delayed reaction. You've done one before? I've done one before. It was awful, awful, awful. Okay. You take off your socks and it's all in there. You have to throw them away. <laughs> but were the results good no. afterwards? No, like oh. it wasn't even worth it. Like I wanted new feet and they looked exactly the same. Tired, you could tell I've worked 10 years in retail. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it's um, not, it wasn't good, not worth it. <laughs> okay, noted. Um, just exfoliate your feet regularly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got one more. Cool. Obviously I am a sunscreen channel, that's all I have. And I, at this moment in time, and this is just what I have like in my like sight line. I have one, two, three, four, five, six boxes, and I'm talking like shoe box or bigger size boxes full of sunscreens that I've reviewed or I'm actively reviewing or have to review. And so I have a lot, a lot, a lot of sunscreens and A, I just have a lot period, but B, not all of them work for my face. Some of them are too rich, some of them are too greasy. Um, and so obviously repurposing your sunscreen to work on other parts of your body. Mm. One of the more famous ones is obviously not neglecting your hands. People show aging on their hands, especially because yes. your hands get a lot of wear and tear use them all the time, your hands are always exposed. After you wash your hands, instead of using a hand cream, use a daily sunscreen. Don't forget your neck, your ears, your legs, your feet, everywhere. So basically, um, I don't really have a lot of body sunscreens because I just have all these face sunscreens. Yeah, and I feel like face sunscreens can be so rich anyway, they work perfectly fine on your body as hand cream. 100%. Yeah. Or if you're me, I I hate feeling greasy on my yes, neck. Yes, because you can feel it, right? Yeah, especially when you have a beard. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it just feels <laughs> slimy and gross. Mm -hmm. Or even like on my chest. And so I prefer the more lightweight, elegant face sunscreen textures to like the really heavy emollient ones. And so for me, those work a lot better. And again, I also have a lot of them. And because they're so small, they're really travel friendly. So. Or just cover up like I do and wear gloves. I don't wear gloves. <laughs> cover your whole body. <laughs> one of these days I'm gonna see someone on the street, parasol, just like covered in one of those like beekeeper yeah. outfits from like head to toe. And I'm like, oh, there's James. Like, no, no. <laughs> there's James Welsh. Is that everything? That's everything. Perfect. Cool. So for, you heard it here first from James Welsh and Ramon. <laughs> Um, the skincare influencer guide to how to get through your skincare PR um, without it expiring. And obviously these are some of the ways that James and I have found to get creative with our skincare. But let me know down below in the comments section so that James and I can learn some new stuff. Maybe some of the ways that you found that you've repurposed your skincare products on your body, in your hair or elsewhere. Make sure you follow not only just me, but also James. I'll have all of his stuff down in the description box. Go watch the video we filmed for his channel and anything else, James? No, that's it. Thank you so much for having me.
I've learned some stuff. <laughs> School is out of session now. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.